name is Barbara Nisman, and I am joining you from my music studio here in beautiful Greenbrier County, West Virginia. And how I wish we could be together on the stage and in the concert hall, but I think that will happen soon. But in the meantime, I am doing some recordings. In fact, we're scheduled to do some Beethoven recordings next month, and I thought it would be fun for me to share with you how I go about preparing these sonatas and take you behind the notes. And, you know, Beethoven is the composer I've been living with during this uh, COVID period. He's great company. Of course, I have to wrestle with him a lot, but um, there's so much for me to explore and to rediscover. And I thought today I would um, share with you one of the sonatas I'm planning to record. It's a very special piece, actually. It's unique among his 32 piano sonatas that he wrote because Beethoven calls it sonata characteristique, um, sonata characteristique in three movements, and he titles each of the movements, which is very unusual for him. So the first one is called Farewell. That's the English translation, Liebewohl, Les Adieux. That's what we call this sonata. Then the second movement is The Absence, and then the third movement is the return. And this is written in the score. So this is definitely Beethoven. This is not a publisher who's added that. This is, this is him. And he said that the reason, um, the catalyst for this sonata was um, the departure of his good friend, uh, Archduke Rudolph. Now he's the man who was a great friend to Beethoven, a generous friend, a patron, and he, uh, and you might be familiar with the Emperor Concerto, that was dedicated to him, and the Archduke Trio, that was dedicated to him. And he was an amateur musician as well. He really appreciated and loved Beethoven. And according to Beethoven, um, he had to leave Vienna because of political reasons. So uh, Beethoven used that as a catalyst for this sonata. And Beethoven always said these titles really don't describe specific events, but they describe more of a feeling. So in the first movement, he's saying farewell to his dear friend, and he even puts over the first three notes that you will hear, les beaux That's so unusual for him to write these words over there, but it's because that motive, three notes, you will keep hearing in the first movement. It keeps coming back, and that's the genius of Beethoven. He could take a few notes and, and make something extraordinary from just this minimum material and develop it. So what he does, and let me walk you through it, and, and in a way, share with you the way I work. And actually, the reason I wanted to do this sonata, I was, I was doing a master class recently before COVID set in, and um, one of the um, students was playing for me the sonata, and I had learned it when I was a student, but it was wonderful to hear it again and in a way start reworking it in my mind. And I have to share with you that when I was a student, it was all about preparing repertoire. So we were gobbling up repertoire. In fact, I, I would learn a sonata like this in a week. I, I had one of those memories where I could like turn the page in my head. I could even see the coffee stains on the page in my mind. And I, I don't work like that anymore. Now that I'm older, I want to take the time to go under the notes, like I said, behind the notes, to really be able to get closer to the spirit of Beethoven. So that's what I try to do. And that's really the reason I want to record this or not. I think I'm much more ready than when I was a student. So what Beethoven does is he will open the first movement. Now we're going to go movement by movement because I think that's the easiest way. And he'll open it with an adagio introduction, but of course he had put um, those words over the motive. And this is the way the introduction goes. And you'll notice that these three notes, to me they always sound like a horn, a horn solo. And that's another wonderful thing about Beethoven, that's also the challenge. Beethoven really did not write for the piano. I, I've always said that. In fact, his piano was, of course, much smaller and more limited in sound than our Steinway. But even our Steinway, he did not write with that in mind. Remember, this sonata would have come out of the period where he was already aware of his deafness. So in his mind, he was hearing 
the ideal sounds he wanted. And I believe that he was hearing orchestral sounds. So I think the challenge for the pianist is to come as close to possible to the sound world that Beethoven had in mind, or that we can imagine he had in mind. So there will be a lot of horn motifs in, in this movement. You'll, you'll hear me imitating the horns, and I'll, I'll try and point that out before I play the first movement for you. So we have this wonderful introduction with the horns. It does sound like horns, doesn't it? Thank you. 
key, um, not a contrasting key. And then what Beethoven does, and it's it's really interesting. You think the piece is over, you know. He finally gives. Um, let's see. Um, <laughs> Thank you. 
Beethoven did so in those two last chords. He's definitely said goodbye to his friend, the Archduke. And of course, this first movement, and I, I think you could follow, especially that mode of Liebewall, and, and actually in musical terms, we would call that a light motif. Wagner was known for much af way after Beethoven for using motives throughout his operas, but Beethoven um, made a point of kind of hitting you over the head with that wonderful motive, and, and I think you'll agree with me. I, I keep hearing it played by these wonderful, warm horns, not the piano. So then we come to the second movement, which is the absence. You know, now, now Beethoven is having to live without his friend, but it's interesting because he doesn't really give us um, a complete sonata movement like he, he did in the first movement. It's, he gives us a movement more in two parts, and I always feel um, that actually you'll hear at the end, the function of this second movement is really to serve as a bridge for the return. <laughs> so let me give you the theme, and you'll, you'll hear how he develops this, this emotion. You know, he's dealing with a longing for his friend, uh, the sadness of his departure. So this is the first theme. Uh, he's missing his friend. 
and now he's back and we're back in E flat major and um, it's like a peasant dance. <laughs> Sonata is put together and actually 
look at the uh, gamut of emotions uh, Beethoven takes us through. It's, it's, he's, he's really extraordinary. I, uh, I'm just in awe. I've, every day that I come into the studio and work on these pieces, I, I discover something else. And uh, he's great company these days. So here's the second movement, the absence. And I must say, in the score, he puts these uh, words in two languages. He uses German as well as French. So everything is indicated in the score. This is not um, something that a publisher thought of. This is Beethoven himself. So here's the absence followed by the return.
you could feel the joy in that movement, couldn't you? I was, I was trying to convey that. Uh, a little rough, but um, it's the general idea. And I wanted to walk you through it so that the next time you hear it, and maybe you'll listen to me on my recording, then you'll be able to really follow it and understand what Beethoven's doing. So really, this is the process I go through. And it's always fun to come back to a piece I've learned when I was a young student. Because, of course, it's completely new. And I, I, I always wonder if I ever really did learn that. But uh, it's a whole different journey. And, and I try in a way to understand the way the composer put the piece together. That's why form is so very important. And then, of course, the emotions attached to it. And with Beethoven, it's, it's miraculous because there's no filler. I mean, every note really has a significance. And uh, you can't take anything for granted in his music. Even when you practice it, you can't take anything for granted. He's the constant challenge, but he's, he's been such great company for me. And uh, in fact, I, I think I would have gone insane without um, Beethoven by my side during this period. But this is the... Um, the joy of music, the glory of listening to music, and um, it really does feed our souls, and uh, it makes things a little better. It takes us to a magical world, and, and sometimes we really do need to, to leave the world we're living in and the problems we, we have in our current world and, and go to even Beethoven's world. And even with his deafness, this was what was so extraordinary, um, the vision that this man had what he could do. I mean, every sonata, because I'm, I'm about to record around eight of these sonatas, every sonata is so unique, and um, it takes us to such a different place, and um, the level of the genius and the inspiration was extraordinary, but Beethoven himself acknowledged that it came from a higher place. He, he had no idea from where it came, but he went with it, and thank God for that, because he's left us these 32 wonderful sonatas. So I'll be exploring another one for you too um, very soon. And in the meantime, please be well, stay safe, and for sure we will meet again soon. <laughs> Thank you.